I am going to be talking about the different career choices in uh, statistics. Career choice is uh, the actuarial science. It's a very highly paid profession. Not many people know about it. So you need to write uh, actual exams to be able to become a, an actuary. Uh, there is huge entry barrier because not many people actually are able to clear these examinations or pass these examinations because these examinations are quite difficult and quite maths heavy. That means you have to be very good in maths and statistics to be able to clear these examinations. So people coming from maths or statistics background find this uh, these examinations relatively easier compared to say people from uh, other backgrounds because they have studied um, quite some maths in their bachelor's or master's program. And then the next career option is the biostatistician. Uh, these are people who work in the pharmaceutical industry. Again, very lucrative jobs. Um, this profession has been there for quite some time. It's, it's mostly about application of statistics uh, in research in medical science or in clinical research. So if you have some uh, interest in biological research, you can find employment in the pharmaceutical industry, but you must be having a good background in statistics. Uh, only then you will be uh, preferred in, this, uh, in these uh, companies, right? You can also uh, become a healthcare policy researcher uh, in, the, in the public sector as well as in the private sector. It's closely related to that. Uh, so again, a very good career option for statisticians. Uh, the next one is data science. Uh, it's a buzzword in the recent time, but it's uh, nothing but uh, use of statistics, machine learning or data to solve business problems. This profession has been there for again, a couple of decades now, but uh, the name has changed. Earlier it used, called, used to be called data analytics, then data mining. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, traction in the recent times and you can find employment across all kinds of industry because all kinds of uh, companies actually use uh, data science to solve problems. Uh, so there's a huge scope, uh, especially because there is a huge uh, gap in the demand and supply of data scientists. And people coming from maths and, and statistics background will be preferred in this, uh, in this kind of job because there's a lot of use of statistics in data science. So having a good ground uh, in theoretical statistics actually is very important to become a data scientist. So this is also a very good career choice. The next one is the quantitative analysis or being a quantitative analyst in banks and insurance companies or hedge funds um, or quantitative hedge funds. So it's, it's a similar profession to that of a data scientist, but with more maths and statistics. So you also need to be very good in um, theoretical maths or theoretical statistics, not just applied maths or applied uh, machine learning. Very lucrative career with high salaries. Uh, banks are known to be paying uh, very high salaries. Uh, and these jobs can only be found in banking insurance companies uh, and to some extent in hedge funds and quantitative hedge funds, also pension funds and yeah, these kind of non-banking financial companies as well. Um, Market researcher, this is a profession that has been there for quite some time. Marketing companies have been employing uh, statisticians to do research or to do research survey data uh, for quite some time. Although the nature of the work has changed drastically because earlier the surveys used to be offline surveys, but more recently we are doing online surveys because it's a lot uh, less expensive, but also easier to do. It's less quantitative than data science, but more interdisciplinary. That means there is not just statistics, but there is also a lot of management science, and marketing science uh, included here. And it's also quite a lucrative profession because of increasing importance to digital marketing of it. So people coming from a statistics background will find this uh, as a wonderful profession if they want to you know, make a career in marketing research. Then OR expert or operation research expert. These are people who work in the manufacturing industry mostly, although you can find in other industries as well, um, a bit in inventory management, order management, uh, in uh, supply chain management, warehouse management. So if you have a background in statistics and you have studied operation research or industrial engineering in your curriculum, then uh, you will find this as an interesting profession. Then uh, being a quality or reliability uh, professional. Uh, now you might have heard about uh, Six Sigma, right? 
So there are people uh, who actually work as quality experts uh, in all kinds of industry. It was started by Motorola and then followed by uh, General Electric and the great Jack Welch was the CEO of GE, General Electric popularized it and now almost all industry are using quality and reliability experts um, for uh, for the different uh, different functions within within their organizations so it's all about improving operational efficiency by using statistical or mathematical techniques so you can read more about six sigma techniques these are very famous techniques used there is heavy use of statistics there so if you have a background in statistics you will uh, be preferred in these kind of roles then being a quantitative economist. Now, the field of economics is very related to statistics because economists use a lot of statistical technique. The field of econometrics, which is about using statistical techniques to solve economics problem, is drawn from the, the field of statistics, right? So, uh, so coming from a statistics background gives you uh, an advantage to being a quantitative economist where you can make use of the uh, econometrics techniques or the quantitative statistics uh, to solve uh, problems in uh, economics of finance right so there's also a heavy use of macroeconomics and international finance uh, sometimes also other fields of finance and risk management uh, and you can find employment in government uh, in the private sector as well uh, and also in the think tanks right also in many think tanks government or private think tanks you can find employment there even banks also hire quantitative economists uh, for, for, the, for different kinds of roles and then in trading um, algorithm trading uh, is gaining popularity and has gained popularity in the decades but more recently in the last 10 15 years uh, trading uh, is now becoming more of algorithm driven than <coughs> human driven so use of maths data statistical technique in uh, trading uh, has increased manifold in the last decade or so um, so even non-algorithmic traders need to be good at numbers. So that's uh, a prerequisite nowadays. So if you have a good background in statistics, you can also try your luck uh, in being a trader. And then being a data journalist, fairly a new profession. Uh, this wasn't uh, in existent uh, like even a decade back. Um, but you might have heard about Nate Silver, right? The famous data journalist who made use of data um, to analyze uh, news events uh, in politics in sports and in various ed other areas so his website um, i think 538 if i remember correctly is a very popular website now uh, where he is making use of data to analyze news events and now all kinds of uh, media companies are using uh, data to uh, tell the stories in a better way uh, and data journalists are doing that so if you have a a knack for writing and you have good understanding of statistics you can try your luck um, in data journalism and there's a huge demand by the way uh, because having both skills is very difficult right uh, having good math skills quantitative skills but at the same time having good uh, writing skills or having uh, skills in social science um, is, is not uh, everyone's cup of tea because uh, it's difficult to find people having you know interest in both areas so uh, a wonderful profession again for people um, with good uh, knowledge of statistics and maths and then uh, being a data engineer now this is again a very new profession uh, although the similar kind of work used to be done uh, but the name used to be called different for example bi engineer business intelligence engineer it used to be called in a different way so it's more uh, mostly about uh, storing data and processing large volume of data uh, and large volume is an important word here uh, because the amount of data that we are dealing with in various companies has increased uh, quite drastically. Hence, the technology stack has also changed quite significantly. There used to be, uh, you know, databases, smaller databases, but the, now it has increased. Uh, tools also uh, have changed. Um, and you need to be good in programming and your computational skills are also quite important especially because the size of the data so the, the algorithm that you write the queries that you write has to be very good so you need to be very good in uh, implementing um, you know highly efficient algorithms so having a good uh, background of statistics or mathematics um, is very helpful in such profession then you can make a career in in this and then finally being a statistician 
uh, it's also not ironic that a uh, lot of these professions used to be called as statisticians have changed now for example quantitative analysis or data science you know these there were people actually called statistician in many industry but now they are being called data, data scientist or quantitative analysts but there are also professions called uh, being statistician um, you, you can find these jobs in the public sector in the in the government but also in international bodies such as IMF or World Bank or United Nations. These are mostly civil service jobs and these people play an important role in policy making in the government. Um, 